Montco Vets sponsors the following portion of Veterans Voice. Welcome to Veterans Voice, a program dedicated to the highlighting and honoring of our veterans and those who support them. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Veterans Voice, first weekend of the month, Saturday, June 4th. My name's John Rickards. I'm a retired Navy Chief Petty Officer from Naval Air Station Willow Grove. I've uh, been retired now for a few years, involved in the mortgage business, and I've had a great opportunity to get involved with what's going on in our veteran community. Uh, specializing in VA loans is what got me excited about it all, but what I've learned uh, is that We've got an awful large veteran population in our Delaware Valley area. A lot of folks are not aware of all the things that are available to them, whether they've been retired, only did a couple of years in, on active duty in any of our services or the reserves. And there's a lot of programs out there that they should be interested in. And I hope to bring you some interesting uh, different topics on the first weekend of the month. Today, I'm very fortunate to have someone I met while... Um, getting involved in Montgomery County Community College and Delaware Valley College. I have a um, Justin Barkley. He is the Veterans Family, or shoot, excuse me, Veteran Farming Program Coordinator at the Rodale Institute north of here. And um, he is involved in a program that's uh, very interesting in regards to um, helping veterans learn and get trained in the field of organic farming, believe it or not. And uh, I think for a lot of our veterans, and we'll get into this in the interview, um, you know, this is a great way to uh, to kind of mm -hmm. chill from the from especially the those who have been in harm's way in the past. But he spent over ten years in the U.S. Army as a uh, leaving the service as a captain, and uh, spent six years as as an army officer. Most of the time as an officer in Germany, and returned to Pennsylvania in February of 2015. Um, he also. Uh, uh, is a, a native son of Montgomery County. So with that, uh, Justin, welcome very welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, again, you know, normally when I have a new interview, and today we have two interviews, all right, we're doing a, a segment with Justin uh, about the organic farming, and we also have a, a, a Navy lieutenant and a lieutenant commander from the recruiting district in Philadelphia talking about an urgent need for Navy chaplains in recruitment. Again, uh, you'll be able to request information or send us some information uh, anytime at info at 1180wfyl.com. Uh, again, it's uh, a great way to let me know what interest, interests you and, 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 uh, and some feedback possibly from the show. So again, I'm going to ask Justin, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about this program because I'm sure that very few people have heard of it. Okay, well, basically we have uh, two programs that I help run there at Rodale Institute. We are located in Moxitowney Township. It's located just outside Kutztown, up there in, in Berks County, so just a little bit outside the Del Delaware Valley, but not too far. We're kind of a combination between the Lehigh Valley and Delaware Valley. Uh, I'd like to f first talk about uh, the partnership we have with Delaware Valley University. This program's been around since uh, 2013. Uh, we've been really able to ramp it up within the past few years. We received a USDA grant to help us hire some additional staff. My counterpart, Emily Bowell, there at Delaware Valley University, she handles the coordination aspect from from the Delval side of things, and I run the Rodale side of things. Uh, the genesis for this program came about between our prior executive director and uh, Russell Redding, who is currently the Pennsylvania Secretary of Agriculture, who was the dean at the time there at DelVal, and they just realized that there was a need from from just speaking to different veterans that they didn't just want to want to learn about agriculture, but they wanted to learn about organic agriculture in particular. And there weren't really a lot of programs out there that would provide them this training. So our our predecessor there at a uh, Rodale Institute and Mr. Redding came together and they set up this program. It's a one-year organic farming certificate program. They spend two semesters at DelVal, and they spend a summer semester up at our farm there in Kutztown at Rodale Institute. The students are currently there right now. Uh, 
They go over a whole variety of different topics. They have a, a farm practicum that they're going through where they're getting a lot of hands-on experience. And they also have some formal classroom instruction that's, that's going on as well. They'll cover a whole variety of topics, whether it's uh, orchard management or compost, uh, vegetable operations, livestock, tractor maintenance and tractor driving. Really? So they kind of get the whole gambit. Is, um, is that something that's, that's um, advertised by the university prior to someone joining Delaware Valley University, or is it only internal to their, the veterans who are already enrolled? No, it's a, they've been advertising it at Emily does the primarily rec- the recruiting aspect of it because uh, at the end of the day they are all uh, DelVal credits that they're receiving from this program and they have to enroll and get admitted through DelVal. So we've been attending different events both uh, within the region and, and nationally of, nationally as well. I just want to make sure that it's clear that this program is open to uh, to all students, but it has been a very attractive option for veterans so far. Does um. The Veterans Affairs get involved at all, and I know uh, with someone who is being trained, if they're coming off active duty, they're signing up, for instance, Montgomery County Community College, um, and they're in a program, I don't know if a qualifying program or not, but there's also a thing called Vocational Rehabilitation and Employment Program, which is kind of offsetting the cost with, with extra money. Uh, to subsist, it's basically on active duty. We used to have that old BAH payment, all right? For, uh, do they get that as well? Um, they get something, This it draws more off of the GI Bill benefits mm-hmm. for this, but they were, are able to, if they have 9-11, post-9-11 GI Bill benefits, they are able to get a housing allowance that I believe is based off the, the E-5 right. rate. for. But it tends to be a pretty good rate because it is uh, based off the zip code there in Doylestown, so yeah. it's Bucks County, so it's a, it's a pretty good rate no, that it's they're, a, it they're is able pretty. to get. So. I've run into a few guys uh, trying to qualify them for mortgages, and it doesn't count towards qualification, Right, but it's a stipend, so it's a temporary mm-hmm. thing. So, you know, if they're during summer break, if they're not going to college or they're not going to classes, they're not receiving that. Yeah, correct. And the way that our program is designed, each each semester, and we have three semesters: a fall, spring, and a summer semester. And each of those have twelve credits, so that they're able to get what is considered a full load, and they can maximize their housing benefit. Excellent. Oh wow. Um. Old. Uh, pre post nine eleven veterans is it, are they eligible for these as well? Yes, they're able to uh, also get the funding for for the program. They have a very good foundation there. The, the Mannion Foundation there operates out of Delval, and Delval is also a yellow ribbon school, so they are able to pick up some of the slack that may occur within right. different fundings that some veterans may or may not have. Uh, prior to my arrival there at Rodale, they actually had a a Vietnam era veteran that went through so he had obviously exhausted a lot of his benefits sure they're still able to find some funding to to help push him through the program what kind i mean again when once once the students enrolled and in this pipeline um what kind of things can they look forward to besides their own private gardening needs well we would look at a a success story being anyone that works from from the farm all the way to the fork is kind of how we say it. So you could be anyone that's involved with planting of organic produce. You could be involved in the processing or even the transportation of of organic produce or at the the production or the end production stage of even creating an organic restaurant. We would all consider those uh, success stories for people who went through our training. Are there farmers in the region that are are looking to hire some of these folks with this certificate? Yes, there's, there's definitely a list of farmers. They reach out to us there at Rodale, and they say they're very interested in farmers because, as people may or may not know, there's a, a huge shortage of farmers in general within America. They estimate that, that there's at least one to two million farming jobs that are open, and they expect even more to come open in the near future with the average age of a farmer being 58 years old. So they're definitely looking wow. to pass the torch to what the next a great, generation. What a great opportunity for veterans in general, just period. Mm-hmm. I mean, c- come on, take over. Yeah, that's... Like I said, a lot of them, they come in there, they're very motivated, fired up to, to learn about organic agriculture. And a lot of the, the veterans that I spoke with, you know, they don't necessarily have a desire to work on some of the the mega farms or those giant farms that they find out maybe in the Midwest with, you know, thousands of acres. A lot of them want to focus on something that's very 
small or family based or you know right. with their friends well just locally we have organic mm-hmm. cooperatives that are that are really taking off in our area i know i use one i have a share in one every mm-hmm. summer and it's a it's a wonderful experience just coming up every mm-hmm. friday to pick up your uh, allotted amount of potatoes and yeah. cabbage and you know and it's all great organic food and it's always like you, know, you can't get any fresher and no exactly and just to put a little plug for my office mate he runs our organic allentown program and they're starting <laughs> farmers markets uh Thursday and Saturday. So if you're interested in the locations, go ahead and hit our website up. And Why don't you give them uh, some of that contact information? Okay, then. If you just want to find out more about the Rodale Institute, it's uh, Rodale, R-O-D-A-L-E, institute dot O-R-G. Okay. And uh, what, other, what other resources can they find through that website that, that will show them events and things like that, that where you're going to be? At or like you said, these farmers markets that are available. Mm-hmm. We have a uh, several different programs. Whether people are interested in volunteering or doing internships there, or signing up for any of our other programs or training events, we have a events calendar there with different seminars and weekend workshops that we have there, with a whole gamut of activities. Whether it's maple syrup or you know making your own rain barrel to vermicomposting to a whole host of other options, backyard beekeeping stuff like that. Well, you know this. This radio program um, is generated, I guess, a 50 to 80 mile radius of the radio station for locals who are tuning in on the dial. But it's also streamed. So there's people nationally and sometimes internationally listening mm-hmm. to this program. If someone was interested in this kind of thing, is this something that is is sort of offered nationally? Or are there people like you that are in different regions? Uh, right now, we, we just have our partnership with with Del Val, but we are looking in the future to potentially branch out and expand to other regions. Now we do draw students to our program. Just with our Del Val students, we have a pair of sisters that came all the way from Wisconsin. They're both uh, Army veterans because they were interested in the program and they'll be returning back back home here in a couple months as they wrap up their summer program. So right now for anybody who's listening to this mm-hmm. and either if they're streaming and they're not in the local region, they could in fact contact through y- you through Correct. Rodale, who you would be able to turn them over to Delaware Valley University in regards to any possibilities of coming here to Doylestown to obtain this certificate. Correct. And I'd also like to, that's a perfect segue into the other program that I have. It's one that just started this year called the Veteran Farmer Training Program, where it's a flexible two to four month program where each veteran comes in, each each one of their programs is different, it's tailored to what they would like to study and what they'd like to focus on. I have two veterans there at the moment, and I expect another three there by the end of this month. And a lot of them will be here for the duration of the summer, and they'll be learning different tasks. Wow. And they're coming from all over. Some are coming from California, Florida. You know, it's it's um, everywhere I go. I mean, from my background as a recruiter, mm-hmm. all right, I mean, again, uh, I'm not shy. And, I mean, for instance, just, just last night, um, I, um, I also run um, my local Rotarian clubs interact which is a high school equivalent of rotary mm-hmm. and uh, coming back from uh, my interact meeting last night i stopped up for a uh, for an adult beverage at one of my old haunts and uh, i found a veteran with a hat on that said uh, comfortably medicated right it was a and it was a, a military type hat and, and it, the young man had a his arm in a sling and uh, i started up a conversation to find uh, he was a disgruntled vet so far and he had been fighting with the VA for mm-hmm. disability, and he said he can't work after, you know, being um, hurt in uh, in uh, Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, oh, "How'd you hurt your arm?" And he said, uh, "He said uh, uh, motocross last weekend." I said, "So you're telling me you can't work, but you can motocross, right?" So I said, "I'm gonna," I said, "I'm gonna tell you how it is." I said, "I'm a Navy chief." I said, "And I'm I want to help vets, but you got to help yourself." Mm-hmm. So I said, "What do you really want to do?" You know, I said, do you want to sit back and just receive disability and not work? Is that what you want? He said, no, I want to do something. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what interests you? And he says, well, mechanics. And I said, well, you know, there's programs that can send you. So I mentioned, I said, how would you get involved in farming? I I said about our interview this morning. And uh, he said, you know what? I'd like to work on farm equipment. So, again, that's part of this farming program in general, correct? Exactly. And that would also be one of the the needs as well. Last September, the Pennsylvania Department of Ag hosted a Veterans in Ag little conference, and they're probably going to have a meeting coming up in the near future where there's – the agricultural industry is actually the second biggest industry within Pennsylvania, which a lot of people may not realize. And that 
you know, it's a very wide net. Doesn't mean that sure. everyone's necessarily a farmer, but they could be working on heavy machinery, especially for people who worked as a mechanic within the army uh, or in the military in general. My father was a mechanic for right. 26 years in the guard, so you know, a lot of people just like to, you know, keep their hands dirty, whether it's grease or dirt and. Farm equipment's big, just like you know tanks and a lot of other heavy Absolutely. equipment within the within the military. And like you like you said, there's a huge need right now in our country. Correct. Right. I know there's it just it just makes all the sense in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, and again, to give an outlet of this kind of magnitude for all these returning veterans, you know that are that are coming off of active duty and not staying in the reserves or even staying in the reserves that shouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. But they've no. got a lot of training, they've learned a lot of disciplines. And now they get a chance to work with, you know, something as, as natural as this, you know, whether it's uh, organic farming or farming in general, uh, it just sounds like a, another team, you know? Exactly. And a lot of veterans are used to working outside anyway. And this could be, you know, working outside in something that may be more positive than what some of their other experiences were outside. What kind of questions? I mean, again, what, what, I guess most people are probably fairly amazed to know that there is this available to them. Mm -hmm. So when you and, uh, and Emily are out at some of these events mm -hmm. and you're, you're prospecting for, for candidates, what kind of reactions do you get? A lot of people are very excited. So, you know, that this program even exists, right? So it's just, uh, you know, for the most part, we get overall positive response. You know, we're always looking to grow the program. And we definitely have a niche there within the organic side versus just farming in general so that, you know, maybe we'll weed out some people who are more interested in the conventional type farming. But it's overall been been very positive. We were able to attend the Farmer Veteran Coalition Conference hmm. in November where obviously a lot of different farmers from across the veteran farmers from across the nation came together and were able to exchange stories. And it was almost kind of a, a very positive pep rally at the end because, you know, once you kind of leave service, some of those bonds are initially broken, especially if you relocate to an area that doesn't have any VA facilities or right. doesn't have a lot of posts or military bases in the region. You just kind of slowly fade away over time. So it's a was able to get that big group together to reconnect and recharge. And there was people from all from all decades, all eras. So what you're saying, essentially, I mean, again, it's the initiation, the initiating of this local regional program through Delaware Valley University is something that's probably going to trend throughout the country, whether it's with Rodale or whatever, but correct. The, wow. There's a couple other programs out there, but some of them are not as long as duration as our one year DelVal program. And they may not be as flexible as, you know, our new veteran farmer training program that we're able to, to offer this summer where the veterans come here and actually receive a stipend and they will receive a housing allowance. So they pay nothing and actually receive money to get training there. Uh, this is a, a, a question that's probably very difficult to answer, but you know, when a person becomes a farmer, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, when they when they enter industry, you know, there's minimum wages and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. What kind of what what kind of lifestyle or what kind of living can a can a person that's just entering in the farming industry look forward to? Well, obviously, you're going to be putting in a lot of hard work <laughs> and long hours. But one of the benefits that we like to to tout about the organic side is that a lot of times those farmers make out better because of the the price point advantage that organic products are able to get within the market so it's actually a somewhat of an easier selling point for us that hey you're selling your corn or some of your products and you're able to get a premium for the price for the products that you're creating because they're they are certified yeah. organic is this the, i mean i know what it's like in the bucks in montgomery county area it's very very I don't want to use the word trendy, but it seems to be somewhat trendy, mm -hmm. uh, the organic. I know my wife has switched over for it's been probably three or four years. I mean, going to grass fed beef and, mm -hmm. and everything else, everything we can find that's not processed. And uh, I, I don't know what's like in the rest of the country. I assume it's sort of the same. Yeah, it really kind of depends within certain regions yeah. so where it's caught on a lot more than others. Amazing, amazing. Well, you're listening to Justin Barkley. He um, he's responsible for veteran farming program. He is the coordinator at the Rodale Institute up in the Lehigh Valley, is where they're headquartered. And uh, he's an Army veteran who uh, is is out there looking to to spread the word on this program. Uh, any information that you'd like, if you'd like to get in touch with him, uh, would you repeat that website for your, yourself? Sure. The, it's the Rodale Institute website. That's Rodale, R-O-D-A-L-E, institute.org. 
And do they, I guess they have to tab to farming? or Yep, they can go underneath uh, different tabs there. Uh, they're always modifying our website, but you're better off going underneath the communities tab, and there's a specific veterans tab there. And even for those who are not veterans, there's other uh, opportunities as well. So that gives you that, that, that you're, na- you're named in the, on that tab as a contact person? Correct. Once they, once they click all the way into the veterans tab, that's where I'm located. If you're unable to do that, you can always email us here at uh, WFYL at info at... 1180wfyl.com. Um, again, uh, subject line, veterans voice and questions, whatever you like. I personally will get back to you if you like once uh, our producer Russell passes me that email. And uh, again, you know, uh, this, is, this is another program available. So if you're a veteran listening out there, you're a senior veteran and you know veterans in your community or you have veterans in your family that you think this would be a great opportunity for, you know, dig into it, do some investigation. There's an awful lot of stuff available to everyone out there. And, uh, again, it's just a matter of looking the, uh, the young man I referred to earlier, uh, that I met last night, he really didn't know a thing in, in regards to where to get started, except he mm-hmm. was using the, uh, the one 800 E something, you know, in regards to his benefits, which sometimes is not the best way because you kind of get lost in the shuffle. You got to find an advocate advocate for yourself locally. So whatever County you're in, if you're here in Pennsylvania, you have a veterans affairs director. Uh, that's a great place to start to get an advocate to, uh, to help you with anything you're looking for. But again, dig deep again, don't sit back and, and wonder what you're going to do. There are programs out there that, that, uh, if you're, if you're not aware of, you could be aware of very easily. Again, it's a, it's a great, another great opportunity for everyone. And again, here's another veteran Justin I'm talking about who has, has found a niche to, to come out of service and get involved in something that that makes everybody happy okay so again i thank you for uh, very very much justin for uh for for being the guest today um is there anything i you know any other questions for you that, that you have for, for no i just like to there? just to like to leave as a kind of a final message that a lot of people contact us and there are farms literally waiting for farmers to show up so there there are opportunities here within pennsylvania so again feel free to hit the rodale website up or contact me at Justin.Barclay, B-A-R-C-L-A-Y, at RodaleInstitute.org. Excellent, Justin. Again, thank you very, very much. Everybody, you're listening to Justin Barkley, again, a guest today on Saturday, the 4th of June. Uh, we thank you for listening, and uh, we'll be back after a break with uh, um, some really interesting information concerning Navy recruiting and the need for chaplains within our service. Again, thank you for listening. We'll be back in a little bit.